Hunter x Hunter episode 61. So We're in the game. We made it. This is the starting level, the, the planes. Well, there are already a lot of players in the game that are higher level than you. Just like life! They already have the items, they have the experience, they have the resources. But what you have is vigor, energy, and a fresh perspective. A new eye, creativity, hunger, and a lot less to lose. There's almost always an advantage in every position, even if it seems initially not advantageous. Invitation X and X friend. Wait for Kalua. Wait for Kalua. Yeah, there you go. When you're waiting for your friend to join. Puhat, the man himself. Is it other players or is it... Okay, yeah. There it is. They're dead. Hey, made it. Oh, they're going right into it. Bold. Yeah, I would like steer clear of that for a while. Get some items first. Get like a weapon, if that's a thing. Get some cards. Get a rock. Overwhelmingly unhelpful so far. Also overwhelmingly unhelpful. Thanks. There were a lot of them. All at once. Okay. Time to pick on the newbies. Steal what? We don't have anything. Well, this spell takes a long time to cast. Whoops! You goofed! Oh, I guess he just has them in abundance. Whoa, 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 this me a lot of reading, this arc isn't there. I love the art for this card. I'm hugging you while you cry, and I love that you're crying. That does seem super useful, though. At least it can be evaded, or can it be evaded? It cannot be evaded. We gotta learn a whole new set of rules. And now he's always watching us, knowing where we are at all times. It doesn't seem all that strong, though. <laughs> we just have like a parallel Phantom Troop arc? Whoa! He's just reading the game data. That's really great news. It's so cool that the Phantom Troop have just entered as other protagonists. Who the hell knows, from their perspective. Oh my god. So RPG. Is this gonna be the minigame for points for items? Are we in a tournament arc? <laughs> within, a, within a game arc? Does it say rocks or papers? There's just so much going on here. A la Xenogears. Is everyone a player? Like a real life player? Or, or are some of them NPCs? You gotta eat? We're shonen protagonists. We got this. Gotta read fast in this arc. <laughs> okay. Alright, there it is. Yeah, there's program characters. Games are designed to be beaten. And they only translated it once. <laughs> there it is! It's for health. Alright, yeah, this is pretty standard. It would be helpful to know how many people currently have them, though. Alright, I was waiting for the death to begin. Here it is. Of course it did. Sure. <laughs> Come on, like what? He just skipped the whole, like, disclaimer, the safety waiver, and now he realizes. That's pretty terrifying. 
Oh, what? I guess Nen transfers inside of the game. Probably scalping cards. Gaining experience or experience points? No, no way. Nope. Praying on rookies. Sure, in this dark alleyway. What could go wrong? It's not that bad. We got the, the delicious row card. <laughs> Just from limited exposure to Greed Island already. I can imagine some people staying in the game not because they have to, but because they want to. I used to play The Sims a lot with my sister when we were kids, and at one point I remember she said, I wish real life were The Sims, and I immediately felt what she meant. Though it's kind of absurd. Logically, like, life is way better than The Sims. There's way more you can do. It's way cooler. But since so much of personal satisfaction is feeling that sense of agency and, and feeling like you have torque on the world, where through your actions and your endeavors and and your intellect, what have you, you are like deliberately, purposely on your own journey with a trajectory that's pleasing to you. It seems to me like so much of personal satisfaction, life satisfaction, is not the present circumstances of one's life, but one's perceived trajectory towards things that are exciting or desirable or pleasing. Like show me somebody who's really depressed in an area, barring a major catastrophe, calamity, and I'll probably be able to show you a way that they feel stuck and don't believe or don't see a way that they can actively, through their own design and not outside interference or luck, engineer things that they want or engineer a way out of their existing problems. The silver lining though is that actually that could be a good thing because the path out is closer than you might initially think. It's not about like the final achievement, it's about feeling like you're on the path of the achievement which can be started immediately. What's so tempting and sometimes dangerous about games is that it gives you that feeling of trajectory in a very clear, simple, easy way that hits that same center of the mind that makes you feel like you're progressing. It's designed to be one, there are very clear steps you can take to advance. You can directly connect your actions to results. The Hunter x Hunter world is tough man. It's deadly and deceptive. The game is simple. How many people are here just because they, they'd rather be here? It's the Matrix thing with Cypher. Not that this is super pleasurable, but... How did you know that? We need a, an ability that like reveals other spells or active spells. Yeah, it's easy pickings. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Let's put this all out in the open. Yeah, I bet there are factions or what do you call that in games? Clans? I don't know. They got cards. They got cards. This is a hard bluff. Alright, this guy's uh, giving us some useful advice. Alright, hard to say no to Gon and that face. Oh, there she is. Oh, there's a. Uh, uh, Pahut. Oh, interesting. Oh, so what's the risk? その。I like that I'm consoling you while you're crying, but I love that your crying card better. Yeah, here we go with the factions. Well, the Phantom Trooper are gonna love this game. It's getting saturated. They've drained all the resources. Alright, so killing is still very much a thing, even if there's no harmful spells. Jin created this madness. <laughs> I mean, I knew he was evil, and I knew he designed this game with evil intent. Once I realized you couldn't skip the tutorial, that's just hateful. Steal them, but we've already established they're hard to find now. It's tricky because it is a game, but I mean, it's real people. Interesting. 
Interesting plan. Team up and win. I mean, this feels pretty real. It's probably the story of human development. Imagining back to our wild animal days, no matter how beastly you are strength-wise, it probably just takes two normal people to overpower you. And so it becomes a race for who has like the strongest, cohesive, trustworthy, large group. That becomes the arms race. And you can kind of see the result in human evolution where so many of our skills and resources are not really developed around raw physical ability the way other animals are, but about social wiring and intuition. I think for a long time I thought about evolution as like adaptations to survive predators, but I think for a lot of species, humans being no exception, at a certain point the most definitive evolutionary pressure comes from your own species in the form of sexual selection and social selection as a whole. And I guess sort of like their plan, there's a scaling effect that happens because if you're that successful, which you would be if you did it correctly, you then start to grow at an insane rate because you're, you're just having way more children into that group and you have increasing dominance over resources. Everyone who's not doing that is just gone. Though this group of rogue animals is surprisingly non-violent and principled. <laughs> What makes this game worse than life, though, is that, like, there's no synthesis. There's no systemic growth. It's like there's just a limited system and zero-sum game forever. Wow, Gon and Clue had great timing. I guess they were waiting for the new, new bloods. Better than four years. Huh? I'm apologizing to Kalua. Whoa! Whoa! I thought Gon was a sure thing. Gon is just full of surprises. He always surprises me. I'm going with them. <laughs> okay. Okay, so they've gotten far enough ahead that they actually can get people out. Yeah, I need to hear this. This is a lot even that Gon didn't pretend to participate just to remove the spell from Glua and then welch on the deal. I mean... Oh man, there's so much here. There's just so much in this. This is so real. I don't know how many people this is not a game at all. Two separate thoughts. The first is that, okay, as a game, there is a flaw in it. And that's what I alluded to earlier, where one of the really cool things about human development, in my opinion, is that despite what a lot of people think, it's not a zero-sum game. Yeah, it's competitive, right? There are limits to material resources. Though, people get very overly doom and gloom about humanity's population growth. I mean, like, there's way, way more abundance than people realize. But that aside, it's not the case, always, in all things, that for one person to gain, another person must lose. It appears that way at first, right? Because let's say there's an apple tree that can grow 30 apples a year, and there are 100 people in that community. Not everyone gets an apple in this scenario that I totally made up without knowing the first thing about farming. But then from there, what if someone devotes themselves to understanding the properties of apple trees and how they grow, and develops a method to develop an orchard. And from there, what if they develop ways to make each tree in the orchard more productive or make the growth cycle faster or what have you? And what if simultaneously each of the other people in the same community are devoting themselves to a similar enterprise but for different needs so that the material resources end up scaling faster than the population growth? And that is basically what a working economy is and where the winning is, where the alpha is. It's not just things trading hands. That's one thing people get wrong about money. You know, they lose the fact that money should be a representation of value created and value often is that very thing. It's like the the addition that you're making. It's not really value just to have the same thing with the same infrastructure and the same systemic yield just moving from one place to another. It's one of the things missed in the idea of like taking money from here and putting it over here. It's only really a positive if that ends up in net extra value created, which is often not the case. The game doesn't have that because there actually is a hard limit. I don't see a way yet that there is synthesis so that the potential of the players to get cards increases. And it seems like there's a fixed limit on who can have cards, period. So the game does have a flaw. But then again, it's a game and games are designed, like I said, to be a simpler version of 
life in a way that you can understand and play. The second thing is what Gon's saying, which, although he's saying it about the game, actually is more applicable to life and is about life. Because the world, life is sort of what it is. You know, there are natural rules that we can't control. There's just a ton of things we can't control. And even in the areas where we have control, things are competitive and they're difficult. It takes a lot of energy and will to approach a problem and figure out how it works and then apply yourself to solving it to get the things you want out of it. And it's not just effort. It's effort plus effort in the right things according to the rules of the game. Yet, how many people spend that energy not actually doing it, but complaining about the rules of the game? You know, talking about things that are unfair, gnashing their teeth at things that really they have no influence over whatsoever, playing according to what they wish the rules were as opposed to what the actual rules are are being stuck on what one wants the world to be as opposed to what the world is and what you want to be in the world and how you can find a way to figure out what actually is in your control and maximize those areas instead of doing this whole spitting into the wind process of life is so terrible life is so unfair the odds are stacked against me i'm just doomed to fail this sort of learned helplessness combined with the false comfort of at least having something you think explains your misery i kind of get it now coming from gona i think it's consistent because of you know every Thing I've said about him loving it, that he's got an eye for what life is, what people are, what the truth is with an open mind and a real willingness and courage and loving heart to engage with it. To find people who are approaching it with a sort of bitterness, frustration, resentment is antithetical to Gon's spirit and to the one I find so exciting in the show. The other day a friend of mine said to me, it turns out it's the things you have the least control over that matter the most and I understand where he was coming from. But I think you could also make the argument that's way, way more useful to make. It's the things you have no control over that are the least important because those just are what they are. All your frustration, all your energy hating it, all your complaining does nothing to change it. So you may as well like accept the uncontrollable parameters and figure out a way to win the game anyway with the things that actually are in your hands. It doesn't make sense, but that doesn't make it good. What a like, damn, for Clue to say that. Yeah, I mean, competition is a lot different from, like, murder. This is really... There's so much to explore in these concepts. Oh, for sure. Aww. Brings a tear to the old eye. Clue loves it, though. We all love it. Everyone loves it. Well, that's, how, that's why it's a perfect friendship. When both people are winning, that's what it is. Young boys? The hell are you? Eh, yeah, Shorty fell in love and she doesn't even know it. <laughs> As if it needed to be reaffirmed, but I'll take it. Future love interest? But it just, I don't know, that was a little bit creepy. Why did I get like, I don't know, creeps or vibes from that? I mean, I think the best friendships and relationships for that matter often sort of align with both people thinking they get the better deal. Speaking of synthesis and alpha and the whole being greater than the sum of its parts, Klua and Gon themselves are representations of that. Another interesting concept to come out of the conversation is when are things justified because it's just the way things are? Like it's just the game, you know? Competition to me seems healthy and fine as long as there, there are ethical limits. But like where exactly is that line? Is it more advantageous? long term to be generous and not take things you could take because you're more equipped or better that can sometimes be really tricky to figure out what is the ultimate authority warp card to Jing's credit it's nice that they programmed this in this early some games it takes you till the end to be able to fast travel which is really annoying I don't know it's hilarious that this game ends up being one of the most true to life life heavy things we've seen so far. Maybe Jing is a genius all along, and maybe this is the true test X test for Gon. Going back to my long rant about the love of life and not complaining about the things that are uncontrollable or inevitable, I think one potential counter to what I'm saying will be to look at desire and dreams and goals and needs in too thin a slice of life, right? So let's say we're talking about finding satisfaction in life and essentially winning the game. And someone says to me, well, my dream is to be a basketball player and I was born five foot four or five foot or what have you. And yeah, if that is how you're defining winning, life is stacked against you in that scenario. You were born with a bad hand in that case. But my answer to that is that that's way, way, way too zoomed in because winning isn't becoming a basketball player. In fact, if you really look into it deeply, becoming a basketball player is kind of nothing. If you strip away all the benefits of being an NBA star, let's say, and it's just you playing in a league where no one cares, no one's watching, and it pays 
gives you nothing. Is it still playing basketball that you want? You could do that now, you know? It's the other things, it's the auxiliary benefits that you're actually looking for. It's probably very human, predictable things like adulation from your peers and society, dating people you're really attracted to and really like, having material comfort, a feeling of domination and victory, etc., etc., etc. Suddenly, there are a lot more ways you can get those things. And it gets even crazier because you break that down and there are sub layers below that. And really, what it is is personal self worth, you know? It's feeling satisfied about the things that you have and liking what you are, who you are, where you are, and feeling confident you can get what you need at any given time. Going back to like the trajectory, feeling like you have leverage over the world. And now all of a sudden there are like a billion ways to do that that don't even necessarily require the material success. So given that, why would you waste any time and energy, especially considering the fact that you can't do anything about it anyway, banging your head against the wall, complaining about the way things are, regretting the past, et cetera, et cetera, all these things that really have no impact on your current life in any sort of actionable way. Thank you